grow or we go from strength to strength, everyone, as we come into the presence of God. In Habakkuk 2.14, the Bible says it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord in Isaiah 2.2 2, shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And in Habakkuk 2.14, the Bible says that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know, these are hand time prophecies that we find fulfillment in this generation before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it will also find expression in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, um, I have a message for us. It's a message uh, from the Spirit of God. And it says uh, the importance of godliness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, in life, um, there are so many things that are important, you know, so many things are important, but above all is spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding is so important in life that when we make spiritual understanding our priority, it enhances every other part of our lives. Every other part of our lives we naturally find fulfillment. There will be gratification for every other thing that we design in life. When we invest in spiritual understanding, the more we can actualize ourselves in God and in Christ, the more every other part of our lives blossoms. And I Bet you it doesn't matter what anybody does, it doesn't matter uh, the kind of career you are in. I bet you when the grace of God comes upon people's life, it makes us to be like the house upon the hill that cannot be hidden, and like the light on the candlestick that gives light to other people. In Matthew 5:13. To 16. So what am I saying this morning? Spiritual understanding is an enviable discretion for life. Spiritual understanding should be a continuous lifelong investment. So just like our daily food is important, just like going to work and being in a career is important. It's the same way that we need to make sure that on a daily basis, in the same way that we cannot miss our meals, in the same way we should deliberately continue to invest in our spiritual being. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I also want to say that every manufacturer asks instruction for their products. Every manufacturer has instruction for their products. You know, and I want us to know that we have the manufacturer or the manufactured products of God. We are the manufactured products of God and because God is a manufacturer he has given us the instruction of our products in the word of God in Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the country and over all the earth, and over every living thing that creeps upon 
the earth. What am I saying to us this morning? God is our manufacturer, as we can see. And because he's our manufacturer, he has given us his word as our instruction, for our instruction, to be able to understand how we are to thrive in this world. Amen. Also, in verse 27, it says, So God, in Genesis 1 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So God has manufacturer's instruction for man, and the Bible is the manufacturer's instruction for man. So God has manufacturer's instruction for life. There is a manufacturer's instruction for life that we can abide by to enhance every other areas of our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. How familiar are we with our manufacturer's instructions? Okay, every product, before you can use it efficiently, you need to consult the instruction. How are we familiar with our manufacturer's instruction, which is the Bible? Godly character is profitable now and after death. Godly character is profitable not only just for this world, but it is also profitable after death. This is for bodily exercise, first Timothy, for it. For bodily exercise, profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. You see, this scripture, if the Lord expands it into our hearts, we shall see that indeed godliness is profitable unto all things. It is profitable unto all things. Amen. So bodily exercise encompasses every exchange of activities of man for living on the earth. What I want to say about bodily exercise is that it encompasses every exchange that we do in life, everything that involves family setup, that involves career, that involves our social involvement, bodily exercise encompasses every exchange of activities of lead of man for living on the head. So God is our manufacturer. And because God is our manufacturer, he is saying to us that our instruction for life is much more important than any other bodily exercise that we need for exchange of our activities in life. His instruction is very important. And I said here, including self-drive for profitability and fulfillment in life. Okay, it is important for self-drive and for profitability and fulfillment in life. I said including enjoying quality life and for longevity. You know, longevity is one of the promises that God has given us. And because God is the one that packs his promises, all we need to do is to continue to lay hold upon the promises of the word of God on the third, okay? Because quality life and longevity is included in godliness. In Mark 8, 36, it says, For what shall a profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give 
in essence of a soul. So this is indicative that it is possible to gain the whole world. And to be careless with the aspect of our soul, it is actually possible to gain every other thing and be careless with our soul. There are so many people that are regretting on the other side that they wish they could do better. And I remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man wished that somebody could be sent back to the earth to go and preach to his family so that they will not come to where he was or where he is. Hallelujah. So it is possible to gain every other thing else and to be careless of what is the most important and that is the center of our accentuation or concentration this morning godliness the building blocks of godliness is in second peter 1 5 if you read second peter 1 5 to 7 it says and beside this giving all diligence had to your faith Virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, temperance to temperance, patience to patience, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness to brotherly kindness, charity. So, godliness as a building block, it comes in layers, layer by layer, okay, to get us to our desired destination in life. In 1 Timothy 6, then, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which why some converted after they have heard from faith and pierced themselves true with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, the building, the building, the building ladders of godliness. Okay, it says, Thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. I know it is so interesting that we, 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 we don't know so many things how you know some of the dynamics of some things in life, how they work. You know, I remember. Um, a long time ago when I first came here and um, the, the kind of job that I had, I, I was in a rotation shift, okay? And that rotation shift was taking me away from church for at least four Sundays in a month. It would take me completely away from church and I was getting very dissatisfied satisfied and what happened at the time was i decided you know i found out from management and i saw that i could get those shifts to be replaced on sunday and deliberately i requested that i do i didn't want to work on sundays and because i said that i was actually losing those income so every sunday when i was supposed to work I was making sure somebody was doing that shift. But you know, God is so interesting. He, he did it for me in such a way that management now called me and they gave me Monday to Friday because they noticed that this guy did not want to work on Sunday. They gave me Monday to Friday and you will not believe it. It did not exist in that company that anybody, including all the managers, worked Monday to Friday only. Only me was allowed to do that. And what brought about that? It was because of my decision that I didn't want to work on Sunday. And then God made the way in a very dramatic, interesting manner that he made only me, a junior staff, to work Monday to Friday only in that company. And I knew that when we take us serious, God takes us serious. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 24, verse 6, it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. In Romans 1, 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Amen. I said, what are the profits of godliness? What are the profits of godliness? Because godliness has profits. And this is what I want us to actually focus on this morning. The prophets of godliness. So what are the prophets of godliness? I said, the prophet of godliness is more than escaping hell. It is profitable on the head. The prophet of godliness. Hallelujah. Amen. Godly character, number one, attracts the presence of God into our lives. Godly character attracts the presence of God into our lives. In Psalm 91, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. Godly character attracts the power of God into our lives. In Ephesians 1.19, the Bible says what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Godly character makes the anointing of God to be present upon our lives. The Bible says in Acts 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You know, it is so interesting um, with my experience, you know, one of the, one thing that brought a promotion on my life one time was that in one company that I was, okay, somebody was, um, one of the top people in the company was sick to the extent that the guy that day, he could not, they were going to call the ambulance, okay? And that was a recurring thing, you know, to something that recalls, you know, the sickness, when it comes on the guy, he, he, could, he won't be able to do anything. You know, as my manner was, or is, you cannot mention to me that anybody is sick and I would not try to pray for them. And uh, at least I've, I've even gone to pray on the dead before, like a dead body, you know. Because, because you know, the grace of God upon us, we've got to express it anyhow, okay. I've gone to pray on a dead body, different kind of uh, deaf and dumb, and two people have been uh, at least two people spoke before, you know, just by exercising, you know, the, 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 this grace of God upon our lives. Because you've got to put it to work, okay? I went and prayed for those people, deaf, and they spoke. Two people in the past, you know. So, uh, what am I trying to say? Okay? Godliness makes us to be carrier of divine presence. And Specifically, with the story that I was talking about, I prayed for the guy in that company that day before the ambulance came. And supernaturally, the guy got healed and he could actually drive himself home. And not only that, that was the end of the sickness in the life of that guy. You know, so I realized look, wherever we are, we've got to make our expression, the expression of who we are in Christ, we've got to impact it on people. Right. You know, because it is not you that is the healer. It is God is the healer. Jesus is the healer. But he needs you as his hand 
He needs you as his instrument of righteousness and as his vessel for salvation, for deliverance, and for healing in the life of other people. So godliness makes you to carry or makes us carriers of divine presence of God. Hallelujah. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men in Titus 3.11, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Godly character makes you bold and confident in life. That is another benefit or profit of godly character. It makes you to become bold and confident in life. You know, I mentioned to us before how somebody told me that if I can't work with you in this company, you cannot work here. And I told him, if the day I leave this company, I said, that will be your last day in this company. And the guy started begging me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is my last job. I like to think back because the, the, those are the things that grant us the reflection of what we have in the Word of God. Godly character makes you bold and confident in life. Amen. In Daniel 11.32, it says, Such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. People that know God shall be strong. Everybody, as we come to Zion, we go from strength to strength. There is there shall be no better yesterday in our lives in the name of Jesus. We shall continue to go strength from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. From one level of glory to another level of glory according to Proverbs 4.18 in the name of Jesus. Amen. So to be like God makes you fearless. Okay? We are talking about the profit of godliness. To be like God makes you fearless. In John 14, 20, Jesus said, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes and hath nothing in me. Mm. Brethren, you know, there, there, there are so many things in life. There are some things, it's only the things that we see that we know. Okay? You know, I've had experience before in which I was, you know, I saw myself like I was surrounded with walls, you know, tall walls around about me. And in prayer, in prayer, in praying, and the Lord just showed me one aspect of the, of the, of the, of the side of the wall. It became like a curtain. And then I saw a personality right there that it made it to look like a wall. <laughs> and then I woke up and I laughed because I knew what God did with that, you know. And not only that, there was another time how I was getting depressed to pray. Like, you know, you want to pray, you just can't pray. So all night I would be on my feet, sleeping, but on my, on my knees, sleeping. And then in one of those days, the, the, the strength of the Holy Spirit came upon me and I was praying and I saw one personality too was trying to keep it down like it, and was trying to call for help just to make sure that he doesn't get up from sleep I mean like to make sure that is you are a slumber you are a sleeper you don't pray and then I saw the personality calling for others you know so you see it shows that life is full of different things you know so when you can't pray don't think it is just that, that you can't pray some altars are behind it some things are behind it you know and when we are trying to make progress in any aspect of our lives and we can't do it or we can't make it i bet you some things are behind the scene that we need to stand up and continue to stand in prayer because it is in prayer that we are victorious and that we overcome. But Jesus said here, he said, hereafter I will not talk much with you. He said, the priest of this world comes as long as we stand in godliness. 
in the God likeness life. No, nothing. The prince of this world will come, but will find nothing in you, and will let go because there is nothing to hold on to you. The prince of this world must let let go. Hallelujah. Amen. So as a godly character is required for answered prayer. This is another prophet of godly character. Godly character is required for answered prayer. So we should never, never compromise our godly character. Amen. Godly character gives you a stand with God in life and in eternity. Hallelujah. Godliness, expect God to be faithful because we are faithful. Godliness, expect God to be faithful to us because we are faithful to God. Hallelujah. Godly characters makes you to advertise God to others easily. You know, it is our godly character that makes people to read us as their Bible. So, believers are the Bibles that unbeliever reads. Godly character makes us to be the Bible that other unbeliever lives. You know, I also remember I was in uh, one company at a, at a time and I was seeing with them as well. You know, and there was this person, you know, she was trying to, um, at least she was trying to, uh, like, get me to socialize, you know, maybe come to their parties and, you know, and all of that. You know, but she said that, you know, I can't invite you because I feel like there is something around you that makes you seem like sanctimonious, you know. But, you know, I, I see I see God that because um, every believer, this is what we must carry. There is something that we carry that will not make just anybody to trample over us or to try to invite us to iniquity. It is we that should be inviting them into Christ. So believers are the Bible that the unbelievers read. In Acts 11, 26, the, the later part, the deep part, it says, and the disciples were called Christians in Antioch. The disciples were called Christian in Antioch. You see, these are unbelievers that they wanted to refer to the disciples because of what they saw with the disciples. So the disciples, they were called Christians in Antioch. And why? Because they saw them that their manner of life looked like Jesus. Okay? So this is what we are trapped onto a horse by the life of godliness. So I say godly character is a weapon of defense against the enemy. Brethren, like I've said, the life is very interesting. It is only what God reveals that we know. The Bible says secret things belong to God, but the things that are revealed they are for us and they are for our children. The godly character is the weapon of defense against the enmity of the devil. In Ephesians 6, then, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And in verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. So the devil and the enemy has different kind of fiery darts. Oh, brethren, different kind of fiery darts. And I'm sure that, you know, most of us will understand what the fiery darts of the enemy is. They are in different forms and multifarious. But it is 
a the godly like manner a life that we live that makes us to be able to overcome and to be able to have a defense against all the fiery darts of the wicked because there are so many fiery darts in this world so to be like God makes you fearless in life it makes you to be able to have a defense against every fiery dart of the enemy. You know, um, I remember there was one thing that happened to me one time ago, like I couldn't use one of my hands, like I, I just couldn't, you know, and then I went to the hospital, and in the hospital they told me, oh, they had to operate something on the hand. Okay, but at the time, you know, because I, I, I knew that it was an attack on me. You know, nothing happened to the end, you know, and all of a sudden you sleep and you just wake up, like you can't use your hand anymore. I knew there was something wrong. So I just challenged it by faith. You know, I was able to get all the medical thing that I wanted, but I just stayed there and believed God and, and I got healed. That's, you know, I will encourage anyone, if there is anything, that we need to attend to medically, we should always check and follow medical instruction because, brethren, medical science is a lifesaver. Okay, I will encourage us on that. Medical science is a lifesaver. We should not say in the, because we have faith that we are rejecting medical science, okay? Medical intervention is part of the grace of God in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. But generally, godly character is a weapon of defense against the enemy. Amen. Amen. So, uh, in Proverbs 21, uh, 28 verse 1, it says, The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold like a lion. Righteousness and godliness makes people to be bold. It makes you to be, to people to be bold. But you know what? Everything has wisdom in it. And then we should always know the wisdom line for every boldness. Okay? Because I've seen a Christian that jumped into the face of a lion before, a lion's den, in, you know, in the, in the, because he was bold. He just, oh yes, it happened. I'm sure some of us knows about it. The guy jumped into the, um, into the cage of a lion because he was bold, he was a Christian. Hallelujah, amen. So, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold, but the righteousness that we are to be bold with is in the knowledge of Christ. Hallelujah, amen, amen. In Ephesians 6, 14, it says, Stand therefore, having your allowance cut about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is part of the expression of a godly person. You know, okay, you know, um, we should not have too many unbelievers around us and we don't find way to reach out to them about the loving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, our feet is supposed to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Everybody around us must get to know Jesus through us. Hallelujah! So, godly character also, um, we are talking about the profit of godly character. Godly characters empowers the human potentials for full manifestation. You see all the potentials of God upon our lives. The potential to be skilled in playing basketball. The potential to be skilled in playing the keyboard, in playing the guitar, to be skilled in our different careers. You see, that's the full manifestation of that potential is in the character of godliness, the full manifestation 
of our potential. You see, the real potential that we have, you see, whatever that we know now, I bet you, is nothing compared. Your potential that you know now is nothing compared to what it is supposed to be. You're supposed to be according to Matthew 5 from 13 to 16. We are supposed to be like the house upon the hill that everybody beholds. We are supposed to be like the light on the candlestick that gives light to other people. Okay, so our true potential comes into full manifestation by godly character. And you know where the empowerment of that potential comes from? It comes from Isaiah 11, 1 to 3. It says, the fullness of the spirit of the Lord will rest upon you to play basketball, to play the keyboard, to play the guitar. The fullness of the spirit of the Lord will rest upon you. It says, the spirit of wisdom, wisdom, special skills that will come upon you, that we, you will know this is beyond your normal ability. The fullness of the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God will rest upon you to make you the best in what you do. To make you the best in what you do. To make you the best in what you do. So godly characters empowers our human potentials for the you will, it will stretch you for the best of your manifestation by the spirit of the Lord upon us according to Isaiah 11 1 to 3 hallelujah and I said that it is also for quality life on earth and in eternity okay godly character is not negotiable for a quality life on earth and in eternity. Godly character is not negotiable. In 1 Peter 3, it says, according as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to the knowledge of him who had called us unto glory and virtue, and the whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, so that by this we partake in the divine nature have one escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. The rest of the verses are not there, but what am I saying? Godly character makes us to partake in the divine nature of God. It, it positions us to manifest God in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember Psalm 82 6, it says, Ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High God. So I want us to put this prayer this morning. I want us to rise up to our feet at this time. I want to say, Father, I receive your help to possess godly character. Or to be consistent with godly character. You know, one of the problems I had in my life a long time ago was consistency. Consistence. You know, so that is why I mentioned consistent. So, Father, I receive your help to possess godly character in the name of Jesus. Shall we begin to pray? Father, I receive your help to possess and to be consistent with godly character in the name of Jesus. Father, I receive your help to possess and be consistent with godly character in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I receive your help to possess and be consistent with godly character. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone related, connected, and associated with our lives this morning for the fullness of the Spirit of the Lord, the fullness of the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, let it rest upon every soul, everyone related and connected with our lives here in the name of Jesus. 
Father, I pray, Lord, for the fullness of the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, rest upon everyone in your fullness and empower our lives for godly character with the consistency of the same. Oh Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for filling everyone here with the fullness of your Holy Spirit for godly character and for consistency of the same to make us the Bible that the unbelievers read, Lord. Make us the Bible that the unbelievers read, oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! Um, I want us to just thank God as we go into the rest of the week. I don't know what we're believing God for. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, something that is specific that we are pursuing. You know, maybe we are pursuing some business, some contracts, some jobs, some, you know, whatever we are pursuing. I want us to pray just for the next one minute that the fullness of the Spirit of the Lord will grant us favor with God and man. So that as we go forth during this week, we receive favor with God and man this morning. We receive favor with all the people. We receive favor as we go forth, as we go forth this afternoon. We receive favor for the week, favor for raises, favor for bonuses, favor for promotion, favor with God, favor with man. In the name of Jesus, as we go forth into the week, we receive favor, 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 favor. As we go forth into the week, we receive favor with God and man. Favor with all the people. We receive favor. 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 Let the favor of God rest upon everyone here, connected, related, and associated. As we go forth into the week, we receive the favor of God. We receive the favor of God concerning our careers, concerning our jobs, concerning our businesses. In the name of Jesus, we receive pleasant surprises. We receive raises. We receive bonuses. We receive promotions. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. We are grateful. Oh, 